welcome to Tired Old Queen at the Movies. I'm Johnny. <laughs> and I'm Steve Hayes. And from all of us at Tired Old Queen at the Movies, Happy, happy gay, gay Pride! Let's go watch a movie. Johnny, you know what? I thought for Gay Pride this year that we'd do one of the classic films of gay film history, which was William Friedkin's version of Mark Crowley's off-Broadway stage hit, the Boys in the Band. This was really sort of a controversial play because there had been no play really about gay life. What's more boring than a queen doing a Judy Garland imitation? A queen doing a Betty Davis imitation. Essentially the plot of the story is this. Michael, who is played by Kenneth Nelson, is holding a birthday party for his friend Harold, who is played by Leonard Fry. What I am, Michael, is a 32-year-old, ugly, pockmarked Jew fairy. And if it takes me a while to pull myself together, and if I smoke a little grass before I get up the nerve to show my face to the world, it's nobody's goddamn business but my own. And how are you this evening? And he invites his gay friends. Frederick Coombs plays Donald, who is sort of Michael's off-again, on-again boyfriend. They started out as a one-night stand, and then they became friends. Just friends, lovers no more. There's Reuben Green, works at a bookstore. He's gorgeous and fun. And there's Cliff Gorman as Amory. Amory is the flamboyant queen of the bunch. He's over the top. Everything is merry, sister, don't tell me. Who do you have to fuck to get a drink around here? <laughs> Would you like somewhere? <laughs> He's really comic relief and at the same time so poignant, so sad. There's also a couple, uh, Lawrence Luckabill and Keith Prentice, and they play Hank and Larry, and they've been together, and Larry wants to be free. Larry is unhappy being in a relationship. Hank has been a father, he left his wife and kids for Larry, and he wants more of uh, fidelity in the relationship. We haven't exactly met, but we've... Hi. Hi. But you've what? Well, we've seen each other before. Well, that sounds murky. Where? I think they're having their first fight. Yeah. <laughs> so these things are kind of all under the surface as these people get together. Now, Amory Cliff Gorman has bought Harold a birthday present, and the birthday present is a hustler. And he calls himself Cowboy, and he's played by Robert Latorno, and he's so sweet and innocent and sexy. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Harold, happy birthday to you. No, and kind of dumb. Yeah, that's not even Harold, you idiot. Oh, well, you said whoever answered the door. But not until midnight. He's supposed to be a midnight cowboy. <laughs> so these are all the sort of stock characters in gay films and literature at that time. There also comes, unexpectedly, his straight college roommate, Alan. This old college friend of mine is in town, and he's on his way over here for a quick drink on his way to dinner someplace. But now look, he's straight. Straight? If he's the one I met, he's about as straight as the yellow brick road. <laughs> and Friedkin's job was to take this stage play, and it is a stage play, just like Mike Nichols' job was, and to open it up. And he does that at the beginning with the credits. They have this male group uh, called Harper's Bazaar singing uh, Anything Goes at the beginning of the credits. And you see shots of New York in the 70s, and they're all working their way towards the party. And they're so really great. Uh, and you get this joyfulness that I found as I was in my 20s when this movie came out and I was in New York around that time and there was a joy, joyful feeling in the city at that time. It was just fun. It was great to be gay. It was fun. Um, yeah, we had our problems, but you know, overall, it was, it brought, it brings that back, that, that sweet nostalgia for me. It's this wonderful scene where all the boys line up and they're all dancing like they're on Fire Island, which is, is so fabulous, you know. <laughs> And it just shows that whole Fire Island feel of the 70s, you know, that, that they had at the time. And it's one of my favorite, favorite scenes, because you never saw men dancing together. <laughs> this play was controversial. Everybody went to this play. And when they went to make it into a movie, they got bids from all the major studios. So Ray Stark, who was a big producer at the time, wanted to produce it. But he said, I want to take out the, the actual homosexual actors and replace them with stars. And Mark Crowley said, no. You're not going to do this. You were a credit to the homosexual. A reliable, hard-working, floor-scrubbing, bill-paying fag who don't owe nothing to nobody. I am a model fairy. The acting is so brilliant by everybody right across the board. Oh, Mickey, please. Alan, what's wrong? 
Mickey, I've got to see you about something right away. Without giving too much away, they all have their secrets. And it's all, as things get uglier and nastier, Michael forces them into a game. What's the game? Simply this. We all have to call on the telephone the one person we truly believe we have loved. And it becomes more and more scathing. Beware the hostile fag. When he's sober, he's dangerous. When he drinks, he's lethal. The dialogue is very, very acerbic, but the lines are hysterical. Whenever Michael starts to get nasty, the drunker he gets, Harold will go, turning. Turning? Churning. You know, at one point, the, the, the language is just free, clear. It's the 1970s, the lid was off. At one point, Donald makes a comment, and Michael turns and says, Sunt, that's French with a cedilla. <laughs> Great, great, great lines. And then it gets really, really ugly. You may very well one day be able to know a heterosexual life if you want it desperately enough. If you pursue it with the fervor with which you annihilate. But you'll always be homosexual as well. Always, Michael. Always. It's very necessary for us to know our history and where we came from. This was an integral part of our history, especially, and it was an integral part of film history. It came out at exactly the right time when movies, when the lid was really off on censorship and movies were becoming more and more free. You'd really like me to compliment you now for being so honest, wouldn't you? For being my best friend who will tell me what even my best friends won't tell me. Slut. It's got a wit, a sensitivity, it's also got a rawness and a kind of nastiness at times. It covers the gamut, and I think it's so worth your time. William Friedkin's production of Mark Crowley's classic, The Boys in the Band. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's Hi folks, for Gay Pride I thought that we would try and tackle something I've always wanted to do. William Friedkin's... Friedkin's... <laughs> <laughs> 